Hello guys, um, sorry, just checking if it was recording, but, um, alright, so, the next few episodes, I'm, are gonna be kind of, I'm kind of gonna, these last few episodes are gonna be out my last for a bit, after these three, I'm gonna take a short break from video making to do, focus on other things, but, but I'll be back to them shortly, but, I figure I'll take this chance in these three videos to spotlight this, um, very noticeable triple feature that I've seen in Walmart quite a bit. It's, it's this here, and it has three movies. And these, in the next three videos, I, in each video, I'm going to talk about one of these movies. For this one, I'm going to talk about V for Vendetta. Now, this movie came out in 2005. It's rated R. It is two hours and 12 minutes long, and it was released on DVD in 2006. Um, it has an 8.2 out of 10 over on IMDb with about 899,000 user votes. That's quite a bit. Um, and it has a 62 on Metacritic with about 39-ish critics. Um, it stars Hugo Weaving, who we all know from Lord of the Rings, and uh, Natalie Portman, who we know from Black Swan. Um, it was directed by um, James McTiergu. I hope I pronounced that right. Ugh. And um, he made uh, The Raven. He directed The Raven. Um, the, on Rotten Tomatoes, it has a 73%, but it's certified fresh by critics with about 244 critics, I believe. Yeah, it's a 2 4 yeah. And it has a 90% by audience with about 61,000-ish user reviews. Um, the consensus on Rotten Tomatoes is a, is a visually stunning and thought-provoking V for Vendetta's political pr pronouncements may... May may by may uh, may rile some, but its story story and impressive set pieces will nonetheless entertain. Yeah, uh, this movie's actually available to stream on Netflix. Actually, um, so if you have Netflix, check it out. Um, and it's available to rent and buy on Amazon. I've got that in there. Fandango, PlayStation Store, Microsoft Store, and iTunes. Now, I watched the movie once. When I first got this triple feature pack, I went watch every movie once. I've been dying to rewatch them again. But um, for V for Vendetta, I love this story. The story's fucking awesome. I will say this, and I don't think I'll be giving away. Well, I may be giving away spoilers. Well, not really. Um, there's not as much action as I thought there'd be in this movie. There's action, don't get me wrong, but it's definitely a dialogue-driven movie. And very, it is the opera Viking, but it's definitely something that you really got to be in the mood for. And it is, but if you are, you'll love it, because I have to say about it, I mean, it's a pretty awesome movie. Acting, it's awesome. Um, cinematography, I love the cinematography. The set pieces, of course, I remember being very cool. Um, dialogue was really good, very driven, and there's one story in this movie that I just, I was just like, this is, this, this is Oscar worthy right here, this story, and this should, story should have gotten an award, but, itself, but, uh, I just, this is one of those stories that really clicks for me, I really enjoy it, and it just feels very warrant. Now, unfortunately, with this what, the sad part about these movies that I'll be talking about is these kind of superhero movies aren't really a thing anymore. And while we do enjoy our cinematic universes, superhero movies, it's hard for them, in my opinion nowadays, to really stand by themselves. It's really hard for them to just, you know, just be a movie. Just be one and done, and that's it. And I'll give that to the the pre-MCU world of superhero movies. I mean, they were they were their own world. And sure, there's limitations, don't get me wrong, but there are positives to that. And the positives is, is I think, and the positives can be various things, but I think the most important one for me is the fact that the world you see in that movie is that world. There's, there, everything is established in that world, and it feels... And it just feels more complete. It just feels like this movie begins and it ends and that's it. And it feels strong like that. And V for Vendetta definitely has a classic grandness to it. That was 
that ha I haven't really felt in a lot of newer movies. Mo is a tone really seen in older movies from back in the day? But, yeah, overall, it's awesome. Now, negatives, like Rotten Tomatoes said, some people may not like all the political talk. And I will admit, there are a few character, a few supporting characters in it that I thought maybe got a touch too much screen time, in my opinion. I would prefer it if it was more on the two main characters than those characters, but... Overall, it's an awesome movie, and I suggest really checking it out. And and it's just, I just love that it's a graphic novel story. I just love that it's a story completely in its own, and it's kind of refreshing once you think how many movies have multiple franchises and all that shit. It's kind of nice to watch a movie that's just a movie. It isn't some franchise wannabe or anything like that. It's just a movie through and through. And that, and I like those sometimes. I enjoy franchises a lot, but every once in a while it's nice to just watch a movie without having to watch a part one or a part two or the sequels or whatever for a complete story. But yeah, that's why I have to say about V for Vendetta. Um, thanks for watching. Please subscribe and like the videos. I recommend this movie. Please check it out. And yeah, have a good day.